Hey, hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I'm great. Enjoying the view? View of nothing? Also, sorry things are messy. I randomly decided I need to redo everything and then I stopped because it got hot and I was like, I need to do, I'm gonna do something else instead. Heat index is like 103 right now. So is the fan bothering you? I really don't want to turn it off. It's very toasty. Maybe let's just accept the sound and let it move through us. How's that sound? All right, to the point. What am I doing today? Well, I'm doing another jellyfish basket. Another hanging jelly bisque, jelly bisque, jellyfish basket planter. I'm doing this one a little bit different than the other one. I what? I have an idea here, and I have like been going through the motions for a couple days, going, "How am I gonna do this?" I'm driving myself crazy. So I'm just gonna do it. This will be an experiment. We'll see how it works together. How's that sound? So I have here this moss-covered baskets instead of using those other ones I used in the last video. Uh, yeah, I'm just I'm just using this guy. It was pre, you know, the moss is already there. It's gonna save me a lot of time, so I can just stick the succulents right in there. This looks like a long fiber sagging moss. I think I'm going to need to do something different in here. Oh no, we're stuck. It's lined with this plastic. That's gotta go. I don't need the plastic in there. Not for what I'm doing. I am gonna end up having to put something else in here, but uh, for right now. I'm just gonna go in here and just pull this on out. You can see the plan here is to have this hanging upside down. So that's not gonna, the plastic isn't gonna work. I need dirt in here so the succulents can affix themselves. Now you see these, these big gaps here. I think I may go ahead and put a little bit more moss in here and then move on to whatever the next step might be. Okay, fine, I'll turn the fan off. That better? I hope so. All right, so any other hanging basket I've ever gotten, like you can, normally pull the chain right off. This is like wired on there and I can't find my needle nose pliers. So I'm going to see if I can't just maybe snip through it. Nope. Can't snip through it. Well, maybe I can just bend, bend it enough to open it up perhaps maybe. I don't know. Okay. Well, that's, that's the next step. I'm going to figure that one out. Okay. So this next part, I was trying to figure out a way to make this like a last thing that you wouldn't see, but well, I just quite couldn't figure out how to do that. So I'm just going to do it. I want to put fairy lights in this. This has an opening in the top which I'll probably be needing that opening to water the plants, but I'm putting this in there too. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get this untied and then uh, feed it through. If you ever notice how fairy lights are always a complete and total tangled up mess when you first get them out of the package. How do they put these together? I don't understand. Come in here and feed this through. Pull it all the way through there. I've barely gotten started and I'm really regretting all of my decisions. Got most of that through, the lead wires through, pop that in there. I have to leave some flexibility on here so that I can get to the buttons and things that are on the back here. And this fairy light is 12 feet long. So that's gonna be too much to have just hanging from the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and pop just this top piece out to the top. It's up right there and I'm just gonna pull the whole thing out. There is something oddly satisfying about this, isn't there? All right, so now that I've gotten my fairy light started, I think the next step here will be to add soil, and then what's going to be my tentacles, and then I will work with this upright. I'm gonna have to create something around here to hold the dirt in too. Hmm. Okay, so when I put this up on a base, I kind of hooked the lead wire in there so it doesn't move around too much, and now I just guess fill, I'm gonna fill it with dirt. I oh, know, I'm sorry, potting soil. Correct terminology here, it's potting soil. I'm gonna put a lot in here because I'm gonna pack it in pretty tight. Wait, before I pack that in though, continuous release fertilizer. I'm gonna give that a sprinkle, then I'm gonna kind of work that into the top of the soil. That might be too much, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's plenty. Oh, um, I, yeah, I forgot, I forgot to put the plant in there. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm using the Dicondra Silver Falls, uh, but I don't, should I put the fabric over this first and then cut it? Or work the fabric around it? Cause I'm gonna use three, it's, hmm. Gotta think on this one for a second. So I pulled some of the soil out and I'm trying to remember when I put these Dicondra in to make sure that they are facing outward. Otherwise, you're just gonna be looking at this side. But that wouldn't look too pretty. All right, so I'm just getting in here and filling this back in. It needs to be nice and snug. Oh, and before I put the dichondra in there, I did go ahead and put the slurries fertilizer towards the top of the basket, just the bottom, but it's the top, because that way when I water, it'll flush through to the roots. Does that make sense? So now I have this weed barrier here. I got this from the dollar store. I don't know how great it would be for actually controlling weeds, but for our purposes here today, it should be just fine. Oh, this feels, just kind of feels like a blanket. Oh, it's kind of wet and soggy. That's. It's a little bit gross. Yeah, okay, that is very, very, very thin. That's all right. It feels tough, a little bit stretchy. I may have to use two layers. I'm going to fold it in half. See, the cut's not perfect, that's all right. I'm folding this in half just to 
give it a little bit more strength. And I'm going to cut multiple pieces and sliver it in there. Sliver it kind of in between things and then tie it through as much as I can. Okay, so that's kind of like a rough outline. I'm gonna take the floral wire and go through and like stitch it all the way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go crazy with this stuff. This is really gonna be providing more of the structure and stability probably than the fabric will. So first I'm going through here and I'm just gonna kind of sew it around and then I'm gonna do bars across the middle in all, all different directions. I feel like that's me kind of boring to watch and uh, it's not that easy. So I'll be back probably in a long time, but uh, just a moment for you. Okay. So, yeah, part of my dirty nails. You've been here, you know what's happening. This is taking a very long time. It's been about, um, I wanna say an hour, not even halfway through. I'm going to just suck it up. Michael's is right down the street and go get a needle with a big hole in the top. That's the thing, right? Does that exist? Let's go find out. All right, made it to Michael's. Hmm. <laughs> needles, there we go. Um, does anybody know anything about needles? I do not. Oh, whoops, I accidentally knocked that down. Okay, this has nice big openings in it, but the needles are really thick too. What if that ends up just shredding that cheap fabric? Oh, these have nice big holes in them. Okay, really? Really? What's that say? Chenille? Hmm. All right. Would you please just, there we go. Stay. Uh, there aren't any prices either. How, how much are these? Are they cheap? I guess I'll find out. Oh, well, they're definitely cheap. Oh, I still have dirt under my nails. So I'll be keeping my hands in my pockets until I get out of here. Okay. All right, so just spent six hours on needles. Oh, I'm so embarrassed about my nail. You know, I keep nail clippers in the car. That's, that's, why did I let this happen? Uh, let's go back and finish up this planter. And I got this, oh, that's not showing up very well. Threaded that floral wire through the needle it's working fairly well, it still snags, but uh, I, it did speed things up. So now I've been going through and I've got this done all the way around the rim of the pot and now I'm doing them across each side and then through the center. So like with this, I went ahead and I pulled this through here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run it all the way through, pull it through this dichondra on this end, all the way and right in the middle, pull that needle through. This is what I was talking about. These needles, they get jammed because they have wire on them, so I'm using these little forcep things which are not in focus. There, to pull that through. And run that all the way through, nice and tight. I've just been doing that over and over and over and over again. I've got the wires going in all different directions. Be the moment of truth. I am going to go through and trim this excess off, but first I just want to see if I need to add anything else. Alright, here we go. One, two, uh, oh I'm really nervous. One, two, three, go. Aha, there we go. Look at that jellyfish. And this is pretty, it's not really bulging very much. It's not moving. I think I actually did it. Just need to go ahead and get the chain on here, trim the excess off, and I can finally move on to the last steps. All right, that fits on there really well. Perfect, actually. So now I'm just gonna come through here and like I said, trim the excess off, but I'm still gonna leave some slack there because I don't want to cut the wire. That would really, really, really suck. Okay, so it's not perfect. I'm gonna have to make sure to attach larger succulents around this to kind of cover it up. You know, the succulents probably aren't gonna spread that much on here, not anytime soon. So this may show through. I may, may just have to live with it. Either way, it, it's pretty cool. All right, and now I'm just going through and I'm running this fairy light, these fairy lights, all the way around here. And then every so often, I'm gonna go ahead and just take one of these pins and push those down in there to help hold them into place. I'm gonna do that all the way around. Went ahead, fed the fairy wire through right there. And then I pulled it through another piece of wire in here. And I'm just pulling it through all the way through so that it lines up right in the center of everything. I want this to kind of drape through that dichondra and blend in. It's going to take time for it to blend in. The dichondra has a lot of growing to do. Hey, there we go. Not much to look at just yet, but that dichondra will eventually fill in all the way down there and it'll light up and glow. And it kind of reminds me of like the long tentacles that you have on like the Man of Wars. I don't need to get too specific here. Okay, so now it's time to attach the Sempervivums. This is this is probably gonna take a long time. I have a variety of Semper Vivums here, different colors, different sizes. I have some small green ones just around the corner that I can use to fill in gaps. And then I have these little sewing staple guys right here. I'm gonna go ahead and take my Semper Vivums, kind of clean them out a little bit, just there's a little bit going on down here. Pull off any dead leaves as I go. There we go. So now I'm left with kind of like a little stock on here. 
Also, I can't see my viewfinder from this angle, so hopefully this is in focus. I wanna make sure these are all pointing up. So I'm actually gonna start from the bottom and I'm gonna do this in random spots and fill in as I go instead of trying to establish a pattern because that, that'll end up just driving me crazy. I'm gonna take this piece, work that into the moss a little bit, take my pen and secure that down. What the main thing is I want to make sure that the base of the plant is in contact with this moss that way it will root hopefully. Yeah I'm gonna go through and just do that all the way around now. Hey and there it is. Full disclosure it did give me a little bit of trouble. There's a bulge coming out the bottom that I'm still working on stitching back up because there's something kind of important I forgot to take into consideration, which is just that wet soil is heavy. <laughs> Whoops. It's all right though, that's totally fixable. Just uh, need to patch it up a little bit more with some more fabric, but it will be just fine. I've got my Semper Vivums attached all the way through here. Care for this is going to be a little bit complicated and that I need to make sure that I keep this moss moist and I'm going to be keeping this in part shade to part sun for a while. The dichondra is fairly drought tolerant, so it should be just fine. I'm not gonna be absolutely drenching this right away. It's had a good watering, a nice soaking. It's got a little bit of a bulgy thing happening down there, which uh, I'm fine with. There are lots of gaps still in there, and I, I was torn as to whether or not to keep on filling it in, because I wanna make sure they have room to spread, and at the same time, didn't want to deplete <laughs> my supply of Semper Vivums because you know, some of them may not make it and I'm going to need to patch it back up. Overall, I really like this and I'm anxious to see what this looks like at nighttime when those fairy lights turn on. Hopefully they had enough charge today before I moved them out here. So I'll go ahead and put some footage in there. You know, we can see what they look like and right, hopefully it's nice and bright and pretty and not too ridiculous looking. Actually, it looks pretty cool. Now I just need to find a proper place to actually hang this thing. Just going to have to give it some time. It'll fill out, should get pretty cool. The dichondra should go ahead and drape down much, much, much further. And when it does, that's going to look really neat. Okay, but that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. Sorry it was so incredibly chaotic. Just kind of, you know, learning as we go here. Next time, which there will be a next time, this will not be as hard. It'll go much more smooth when I actually know what I'm doing. I will keep updates on my garden tours at the end of the month, so you'll be able to see what happens with these. You know, I have the other jellyfish planter right there, and another one that's around the corner, and one more in the making. But don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. It helps a lot, and I appreciate every single one of them. Thank you so much. Subscribe as well. I upload multiple times a week. I'll link all my social media down below, down there in the roots of the video. You can follow me. I'll follow you back. We can show pictures. It's a lot of fun. And comment down below. I love hearing from everybody. Let me know your tips and tricks for upside down planters. This is an experiment, and I'm sure that there's probably a better way it could have been done. And if there's any tip I could give you, if you decide to do it this way, get a needle that has a big hole in it. It will speed this up so, so, so much. All right, I hope everybody is doing well. And as always, everybody, most importantly, keep on growing. Bye-bye.